Let's kick things off for this supersized episode of the Bad Faith Podcast with a what is now a recurring segment uh, on the show. It's Nero Watch. <laughs> I don't know if we have a like if we have a jingle for that if uh, some kind of non copyrighted music <laughs> like to indicate that this we're talking about Nero at this time uh, and you know he, you know I, I I compiled a little dispatch for you teetering on collapse is how the press described Nira Tandon's nomination to head the OMB this week her two preliminary confirmation votes in the Budget Committee and the Homeland Security Committee have been indefinitely postponed. Signal she was likely to lose one or both votes. Chris and Cinema, a right wing Democrat, sits on the latter committee and she's publicly undecided. The speculation is she might follow Joe Manchin in turning Nira down. Bernie, as you know, chairs the budget committee and he's also publicly undecided. One possible hint why, reported by Jake Tapper, a source close to the process confirms that the Politico report that Senate Budget Committee Chairman Bernie Sanders was not consulted before the Biden team announced it would be nominating Tandon to be director of OMB. Sanders learned about it from news media reports. That's a good way to piss off the chair of an important Senate committee. I, it's curious to me. I wonder if it's like they're intentionally keeping it from Sanders and it's like another level of uh, disrespect, like they just don't have the decency to let him know, or is this one of those things where they know that he's going to be upset, <laughs> and so they're just trying to delay the inevitable? I mean, it could also just be a genuine screw-up. It's hard to imagine, though, with as many people's hands are on these kinds of things, that not a single person would have flagged that there might be some issues with Neera Tannen's nomination. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, we'll get to that. There's been some more reporting on that. I speculated last week that the GOP might smell blood. And indeed they do. Mitch McConnell has told his caucus he wants them to stick together on this vote. And if they do, her nomination is effectively done. The White House is so far publicly sticking with Tandon, saying they will fight to get the 50 votes they need to confirm her. It comes down now to a handful of senators and whether they're willing to buck their party, Bernie Cinema, Chuck Grassley reportedly, and Lisa Murkowski, Republican was something of an independent streak. So that's where the battle lines are. There was a strain of media commentary that basically said it was over and done for Nira, that she was hitting the phones on her own, the image yeah. of her kind of alone in a room, trying desperately to get enough people together that would actually continue to support her nomination. But as recently as Wednesday morning, you had Jen Psaki, the press secretary, tweeting, Nira Tandon is a leading policy expert who brings critical qualifications to the table during this time of unprecedented crisis. She declined to elaborate on those qualifications. Outside of saying that her perspective and values, i.e. the fact that she is a woman of color uh, who used the entitlement programs she has subsequently tried to cut, are what qualify her for this position. Well, it really does seem like a half-hearted defense of an embattled nominee, a controversial nominee, a nominee who is starting to make them look bad, frankly. Another wrinkle of this is that Biden doesn't actually care about Nira. She's not a Biden loyalist. She's a Clinton loyalist. And here's, yeah. a, here's a line from Politico's early obituary. One senior Democratic Senate staffer complained that even early on in her confirmation fight, the White House was lackluster in its advocacy for her and tone deaf to the chiller reception she was getting on the Hill. There were questions about how many champions she even had at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The staffer said, who does she have? Ron Klain. That's her constituency. Which really highlights the extent to which the argument from liberals that only some small cohort of bad faith right wingers are against her is really mm. not accurate. It seems like even among moderate liberals, there's not a ton of support, especially given that it's not really clear what the payoff is here. Um, Speaking of which, I was listening to a little Positive America, you know, as I oh, God, I, what? What? to do. Look, can I tell you, I, I don't know if I'm just a, a little shame picky. I don't know exactly <laughs> what's going on, but I sincerely enjoy the experience of listening to the show, even as many of the political positions taken and the critiques, the half-hearted critiques they make, maybe want to pull my hair out so one of those was what? That <laughs> wait there's a lot you can't just you can't just say that and then expect to go to another thing what <laughs> is, what is it that you enjoy about the show i don't know they have a certain camaraderie and they have a certain like 
repartee. They, they obviously are friends. They obviously know each other. They have their little routines. You know, Levitt is funny. You know, he's he's funny. And I am informed. They are, they do give you like a straight, not so straight read of the news, but like straight enough read of the news and you know what their biases are so you can correct for it. And with a level of detail that sometimes doesn't come across in, you know, the very ironic lefty news cycle, which can jump a little quickly to editorialization and not linger enough on what actually happens. So you're, you're brainwashed is <laughs> why you're telling me that they're, they're sending Sigma waves into your brain and they're brainwashing you with their, with their Obama bro patter. <laughs> My middle name is joy, but with one change of one consonant, it could be John. <laughs> unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, why don't you go see if they have a freaking job opening, you know? Do <laughs> you want to be on a show that's informing people and, uh, you know, where the hosts are friends? <laughs> well, I don't match the demographic requirements there, Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of on, on the show. <laughs> we'll get back to this at another time. <laughs> well, speaking of, they do tackle the Nira question on a oh. recent episode. They also have a Nira watch. But Ben can also, you know, uh, pre preface this with the uh, a distorted version of the Nira watch <laughs> jingle. Well, they had a direct dispatch to the left that I thought that our listeners might be interested in hearing. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's put that on. But I also, I, first yeah. of all, fight for the posters. Ugh. Fight for the right to post. Fight for the <laughs> well, honestly, we want people in government who grab a glass of Chardonnay at 11 p.m. and start arguing with people that have no pictures with their faces. But, but just like, like we, we want that. Fight like, for freedom of speech. <laughs> like, are, are, are we for right. freedom of speech or not? I just, it's so frustrating. Everyone is for freedom of speech until it, it hurts their feelings. Yeah. Nira, <laughs> fight for Nira. Hey, I want, I want every red rose out there to fight for the right to post. <laughs> But this is this is about shit posting. That's First they this came about, for This isn't about the tweets. federal budget. This is about <laughs> shit posting. Cut, 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 cut it! Cut it! Cut it! Cut it! No more! 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 How do you listen to that? How do you listen to that? It's that is the most caustic thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Look, you know how I am. You know I love to hate watch a thing. You know that I, I will literally take something out of my queue if it's good. No, that's not what you said. There's clearly some <laughs> aspect of the aesthetics of this that's connecting with you, and I, I cannot see how. I'm sorry. It's well produced. Look, I'm not going to defend You don't have to be sorry. I like, pink, okay? You, know, you, I, can I, I, you don't have to. No, enjoy it. I'm just trying to, I don't know, psychoanalyze it. <laughs> The point of the matter is that I'm I'm in the trenches bringing you um, dispatches from the middle. <laughs> and, you know, what's most frustrating, about, I mean, we can obviously they're being kind of glib there, but the, what was frustrating about the whole segment is that they are doing the thing that the Democratic Party is doing right now, which is to pretend that the issue with Neera Tandon is exclusively the, the fact that she doesn't exercise restraint on Twitter. And they're pointing out that Republicans are hit hypocrites for caring about this, but not caring about all the crazy stuff that Trump and all of his allies have tweeted over the last four years. Of course, that completely ignores, as they always do, that the critique from the left, from the red roses that they will glibly invoke in a bit like this, are critiquing mm. her on substantive policy grounds, none of which are mentioned in the context of this episode. Absolutely. And, you know, I do I, I do think it's, it's funny, this admonition of the uh, red rose people to save Nira's candidacy when you know i mean I, I i know this isn't the highest stakes thing there are what happened i i just looked down and there was no levels and it was because i plugged the thing into the wrong hole again you know pod you know pod save america they, that would never happen on that show <laughs> it's true it's very well produced that's my fault that's oh, not a wow. dig at you ben I, yeah nice <laughs> nice you're really you're really you're really ins <laughs> you're really insulting a lot of important people right now <laughs> What I've heard and what I've learned from this segment is that it's really important to uh, make enemies everywhere you go. <laughs> Nearest style. I think this admonition to the, the rose emoji types who are, you know, far left hankies in, in these weirdos minds uh, to uh, save Nearest Cassie is really funny because, uh, frankly, uh, as uh, something of a rose emoji individual myself, uh, I don't have any impact over this whole process. I can't change how Chris and Cinema or Lisa Murkowski votes, but I still encourage people to, 
you know, help tip the scales a little bit. Make your voice heard. But, uh, you know, so, some hashtags have emerged. Re, uh, reject Nira, reject Tandon. Uh, I think reject Tandon is a preferred one, but I don't know. Reject Nira rolls off the tongue a little better. Uh, and I mean, the only reason that I say that is, you know, it's not because it's a very high stakes fight. Uh, it really, you know, it isn't. But it is genuinely disappointing, not unexpected, disappointing to see how the you know, mainstream corporate media is covering this fight, which, as you said, is making it all about either bad tweets or that, you know, this is motivated by misogyny or racism. And that's it. And there's and there's, you know, there's just two sides on it, the, you know, the Republican side and everyone else. And not I have not seen anywhere articulated in a place like the Washington Post and the New York Times, Washington Post editorial board came out in favor of Nira, by the way. Uh, mm. the left wing argument against Nira. What's funny is that both Jennifer Rubin, who, to be clear, is a Republican. Yes. I know that yes. they like to pretend that being a never Trump Republican is somehow a political ideology that makes you longtime bedfellows with Democrats or yeah, bedfellows you, at all. But she, to be clear, is a Republican. <laughs> politics. You transcend ideology. <laughs> so Jennifer Rubin and the lads at Podsave are in agreement on the fact that if it's not Nira, whoever will replace her will be even more to the left. Now, Jennifer Rubin brings that up as a uh, incentive for the right wingers and the conservative Dems to go ahead and confirm her. You know, Pod Save brings it up in that way that they do where it should be an argument, but they refuse to make a political argument. They refuse to take a position. So they kind of put it out there as though they aren't tacitly making the case for why we should just go ahead and let Nira not be confirmed. We should abandon Nira. It's a stellar opportunity to condemn online harassment, particularly the the, the sorts of online harassment engaged in by supporters of Nira Tandon. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I want people to be as loud as possible in opposing this nomination. Uh, granted, there are very there are other very important fights happening right now, so don't let that take you away from things like fighting for a fifty dollar minimum wage. But it's also just a fun thing you can do. You know, if you just want to blow off some steam and have fun online, uh, you know, tell Bernie Sanders or Lisa Murkowski not to vote to confirm Neera Tandon. Uh, speaking of that minimum wage, you know, all of this is taking place in the backdrop of high stakes negotiations over the one point nine trillion dollar covid relief bill where Cinema Mansion's votes are critical. And this is an interesting point from later in the article. Democrats also argue that a scuttled Tandon nomination is not a terrible political outcome for Biden, as it gives Manchin and Republicans a chance to say they broke with Biden on something on one front while giving them cover to back his agenda elsewhere. If you remember, Brie, that's the argument I made last episode. Virgil, you're brilliant. That's why we really appreciate and value your presence on this show. Yeah, there's total confirmation from this anonymous uh, Democrat who talked to Politico <laughs> reporters. Are you adding yourself as a source right now, Virgil? Uh, God, who is who is this masked hero? Uh, uh, you know, a, a few, you know, one other note here, uh, you know, this is just to give you some idea of how utterly tone deaf this nomination is. Here's Owen Higgins back in December. Just interviewed the head of a major progressive group who said that the Biden transition team reached out after the Tana nomination to say, quote, aren't you happy? We met your demands. We brought in a movement leader. Was the person they reached out to Sean McElway? And did McElway <laughs> say, yes, I am happy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. He wrote an article about it. So I think the, the name's in the article, but I just quoted the tweet because I'm lazy. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, that's I mean, that's funny. That's how the mainstream, you know, the core media, that's how they view Nira Tan. And that's what they, they genuinely think that's the case. People like Ron Clay genuinely believe that's the case. So scream as loud as you can. No, we don't like this person. She's awful. Yeah, the fact that mainstream Democrats truly have no sense of what progressive means, even after Bernie Sanders claimed a substantial bulk of the Democratic Party electorate, the lack of intellectual political curiosity on this front is continues to be astounding to me. We should play the I mean, I don't want to rehash it, but like. <laughs> uh, no, we're not playing another Pod Save America <laughs> clip. I'm putting my foot down. Ben, don't do it. I cannot hear it. I, I will leave the show. I will <laughs> no, walk I away. Just, I was just going to allude to how clumsy, you know, with all due respect, you know, Brian Steltzer was trying to describe 
the political orientation of Elizabeth Brunig and I on CNN a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. And and the weird hodgepodge of of shows from Mother Jones to Bad Faith <laughs> that were described as progressive. Yeah, I mean, I don't expect much better from you know CNN and MSNBC or the Washington Post. I mean, if anything, that's symptomatic of, of the uh, fact that the left, you know, the socialist left, uh, for as large as it is, for as influential as it is, for its many victories in the past two election cycles, uh, still remains, you know, marginalized in the popular discourse. Well, not for long. Because we're here now. <laughs> not for long, because we're getting our woman in at OMB. Uh, <laughs> actually, when this confirmation process started, I glumly thought that Nero would squeak by in a tight vote. Last weekend, I thought she was still a slight favorite, but my New York Times election needle is swinging pretty hard right now. <laughs> so, so just to try to read the tea leaves here, I think cinema is a no. This is the speculative part of bad faith. I think cinema is a no. Okay. And that's why they canceled the Homeland Security vote. Because Nero would have lost there without the, uh, without cinema's vote. So okay. they, they can so then right after that they canceled the budget committee vote. In part, my guess is because Bernie didn't want to vote to confirm someone he doesn't like who's doomed anyway. My read is unless there's a miracle, I think the nomination is doomed and I will boldly predict right now this is the Virgil Texas lock of the week that Nira gets pulled on Friday night. Okay, Virgil, I trust your needle. I'm not going <laughs> to push back against your needle. <laughs> you said it's you said it's swinging hard, and I will not object. It could happen Thursday, but you know what? I mean, I could have said by Friday night, but no, I'm going to say it's going to be Friday night, late afternoon Friday night. The defenses of Nira Tannen are getting pretty deranged. Yeah. There, it's like some some wild stuff. I mean, some of it some of it does make sense. You know, I heard someone. Uh, you know, I, I, it's been going around that oh, uh, you know, a mansion opposes Nero because Nero criticized Mansion's uh, daughter, mm -hmm. who was the head of this uh, um, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company, company that yeah, you know the uh, prices. Yeah, yeah, of EpiPens or or an EpiPen equivalent, something like that. Yeah, uh, which I mean, it could be the case certainly, uh, but. There's no some, one's defending Joe Manchin's yeah, no reasons, regardless. No Manchin. I mean, I'm sending him. I'm yeah, I'm sending his office ten thousand roses, uh, <laughs> certainly to thank him for voting against Nero. But that's all I give. That's all I care about the man. It's like what he votes. <laughs> Big uh, Marcos energy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you caught this. This like this oh, disgusting little bit by some Capitol Hill reporter uh, that was you know Joe Manchin's rock star. He just like gets off the elevator and and all these senators are calling him out by name and then. Uh, <laughs> Chanos off, uh, you know, shakes his hand and uh, Cory Booker stops to take a selfie with him. Wait, seriously? Like they're all just trying to ingratiate themselves to him so he doesn't hold up the Democratic Party agenda? No, they think he's really cool. They think he's a cool, like hot guy. It'd be like if if it'd be like if Logan Paul showed up, like you'd want to get a selfie with him. <laughs> Wait, but uh, Joe no, Manchin. No, they're Corey... trying to ingratiate. Yeah, they're trying to ingratiate okay. themselves with him. What do you think? <laughs> uh, but, you know, just, just one last bit. One last thing. Here's here's my favorite just d deranged argument for Nero Tanning. This is Congressman Eric Swalwell, mm. uh, who is white. <laughs> <laughs> it should be stated that you are white. I represent one of the largest Indian American districts in the U.S. How do I look at what's happening to Neera Tandon and tell little girls of South Asian descent that they'll have the same opportunities in life as white men? The answer, I can't. And that's a shame. <laughs> like, that's not your job. You're not, you're not your job to go around to, like, strange little girls of South Asian descent and tell them <laughs> what they can and can't do. But if, when, when you're making the rounds... What you got to tell them is, sorry, you can't be the OMB director if you're of South Asian descent. It's, you just can't, you can't do it. That's life. If, if you're South Asian, you can be vice president. You can make a documentary about a poo or you can publish Jacobin. But you absolutely, positively cannot be the director of the Office of Management and Budget. It's not allowed. And that's because of white supremacy. 